Good morning and welcome to This Weekend's Brunch Club, where we toast to all the amazing, diversely faceted women out there. Filling your cup with inspiration and encouragement as our guests share their personal stories, experiences with careers, family, parenting, equality, mentoring, and advice. The Brunch Club is where we raise a glass and champion female talent and leadership everywhere, and where sparkling is always encouraged. Now, here is your host, Rachel Swoboda. Okay, so we are officially back after that, after you left us with the cliffhanger. <laughs> so in, in this moment, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, I'm done. I'm, I'm like over it. I'm done. I can't do any more. I pick up the girls. I leave. Um, and, and still in this moment, like now, now the truth's now I'm having to tell my mom and dad. Now I'm having to tell my, now because I'm leaving, I'm picking up, I'm leaving. Now my church is finding out right yep. now. All my friends, all my, my, my team, my Herbalife team, my, everybody I work with, it's all coming out. But what do they do? They blamed me because I left. Whoa. How could you leave? He's such a nice guy. <laughs> How could you leave him? But because because I left, yeah. they assumed that there's some there's something wrong with me. Well, if there was something wrong with him, then why didn't you make him leave? Right? Yes. And and so and I didn't, you know, and, and still at this time, like I'm still thinking there's hope, like he's going to get the picture like oh, I need to change. I've got to do something different. You know, if I work on me, I can get my family back. You know, I was still giving him that opportunity to do that. You're you know, so much I, nicer than I was. So much nicer. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, I, I have three little girls, right? I have, I'm, I'm still trying to like, okay, giving everything I can. Yeah. Um, and so I had rented a little house not very far from where our house was, and and the it was it was the very first day that I had just moved in, and he broke into our house and he threw me up against the wall with his hands around my throat in front of all three of our daughters and mm. beat the crap out of me, and so that was it. Oh that was God. it. I'm done. I'm mm. over, and I filed for divorce at that moment. And, and how old were the kids then? Um, so th they would have been, um, let's see, six, six, four, three. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and, and, and two, and so, so I, my, my church turned their back on me. I lost my friends there. They, they gave, they took away my ministry because I left him. Um, all my, my business partners, people, I mean, even my upline who were my godparents to one of my daughters, they turned their back on me. They all took his side. That is horrific. And, you know, but, but you know, the thing about it is Rebecca, I mean, at the end of the day, it was, it was really kind of a blessing because first of all, I saw that i I mean, I put too much faith in people and people will always let you down. And I really put my, I mean, it was really just me and God at that point. Do right? you still believe that? That people will always let you down? I mean, here's, okay. So to, to a degree, I think that we place expect unrealistic expectations on people to fulfill our needs or our emotional needs or um and so i've learned how to love people where they are without expectation and knowing that they're human and they there's the there's the capacity for that either unwilling willing doesn't matter um because at the end of the day, I mean, like it, it was, I, I think for me, it was just the, the, the piece that I had to learn that the only person that I can, or the only thing that I could really put my hope and trust in was God. Okay. I mean, re really? And that, that not to place unrealistic expectations on people and knowing that they're just human and they're, they're infallible, yeah. you know, and, 
and not saying in a judgmental way at any, at any, you know, but, um, so it was a big, I think it was a big learning. It was, it was a big, big learning curve for me, but, but what happened next was probably the most devastating thing ever because, um, so you have to keep, so you have to understand, I'm, I'm living in West Texas. He's the hometown hero. He was the all-star athlete. He was this, he was, he, he was the high school all-star. He was the college star. Yeah. Re, then recruited. He's the hall of famer at college. He's yeah. the NFL star. He's, he's everything. Mm-hmm. And I walk into, I, so he's fighting me for custody. And so as I share my custody story and you know, I never wanted to fight him, I'm still trying to play nice. Yeah. I'm still trying to like, like, well, I don't understand why you're doing, but it wasn't because he wanted the kids. He just wanted to hurt me. Of course. Yeah. And, um, so, but so I go through this, I go through this process and I, 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 I went through one attorney and so I, I paid the, I paid the attorney and I missed three mediation dates because of her. Now, I don't know if you know anything about the law. I spent a, quite a few years in family court. So yeah, I get it. And I went to so, law school too. So three yeah. mediation dates that you miss because your lawyer doesn't, fails to tell you about them and you miss and the judge thinks that you just skated them. That's terrible. So I walk, so I have a new attorney. I walk into court. I have, I have 11 character witnesses for me. He has none except his mom. His mom accused me of physically abusing all three of our daughters um, with no physical, no CPS, no reports, no anything. Keep in mind, we're good old boy, West Texas. I mean, my story, I'm tell- I've got police reports, police report, yeah. police report, police report, telling my yeah. whole story. And I've got a district judge that's literally snoring in my ear. I look over, he's snoring. I look at my attorney going, yeah. And the, my attorney motions for me to keep talking without putting on the record, judge, can you please wake up? Because we're dealing with West Texas, good old boy system. That would have, I mean, that would have been the kiss of death for him, mm-hmm. for my attorney in, right. You know, it's it, anyway, long story short, I lost custody of my three daughters in a district court in West Texas due be, to my abusive husband of many, many years. So now I am the one. So now he got half of my business. Wow. I had to pay him. I had to pay him child support, alimony. He got the kids, and then he moved them a hundred miles away illegally, and refused to let me talk to them on the phone, because it didn't say it in the decree. Oh my God! So my life turned upside down completely overnight. Completely, I went from being mom, my life, my kids, everything. They were my life. Yeah. To, nope. Now I have, now I have no support system, no church, no friends. Everybody blames me. I have no family. And it now it even acerbates everything, you know, exacerbates everything because now it even looks like what did she really do? People didn't yeah. know. So now I have all the judgment on me. How did you climb out of, how did you climb out of this hole with no support system to lean on? What, there, there had to be some like grace of God moment here. It was God. I mean, it really was God, Rebecca. I mean, like I, I, it was probably the darkest moment period of my life. And all I knew, all I knew was my faith. I, all I knew was that, I mean, I, if I wouldn't have had my kids to fight for, I mean, it was, this, it was really the word, it was literally the word of God. I literally would preach to myself all day long. Like I would literally like read scriptures out loud to myself, just trying to keep my brain from going crazy. Yeah. That's the only thing I can only attribute it to that. Um, and so, so in the midst of this, like in the midst of all of this chaos going on and all of this, I met, um, my mentor because at the same time of all this, of this going on over here, I'm still trying to keep my business going. And because 
I have to make money. I have yeah. to be building in spite of all of everything that was taking place. And so um, the, the first distributor in the state of Texas, her name was Tish Rasheen, and she was actually ended up being my upline in, in Herbalife. So that was my business. And so the founder and president had actually passed away. And so she took 10 of her top people in her organization to go meet and work with her brother who had been the co-founder at that in before I had even met him. So he had been my mentor from afar all those years. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm going to meet him and we're, there's 10 of us. We go to California. I meet him and it was literally love at first sight, but I didn't know this at the time. I just thought I was some sort of groupie. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> like, so starstruck, like I'm meeting my mentor. Right. And, and I didn't know it. And I didn't know that he was feeling the same thing or same way, but it was, so it was in the process of all of this. So I'm doing all this. So we're building and doing business and business meetings. And, and so, um, so I'm going through this on the other side. And because we, we were having business conversations, we started having personal conversations. Yeah. And so I started disclosing what was happening and what was going on with me behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And we became really, really great friends. And we, we developed this really strong spiritual connection. So keep in mind, he lived in California. I'm in Texas. Yeah. And um, we fell in love. Oh, my goodness. We, we fell in love over the phone. Um, <laughs> he became, I mean, we, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It was like um, 18 months of having phone conversations. We had a first date. And, and so, it, but you know, it was one of those things that, I mean, I just thought he was my friend. I never believed in a million years that we, it would, our worlds would ever collide. He was 20 years, my senior, his children had already grown. My life is an absolute, absolute chaotic mess. Why would he take on somebody like me? You know, why would that, how could that even be possible? You know? And, and I had tried to date other people and go out with other people and date other men, you know, in the process. And all I, all I cared about was getting home and sharing my date with him because he was, oh. he, he turned into be my best friend, my confidant. And, yeah. and it was, it was such as, it was, it was really interesting that we really became that kind of friends, but I, I literally fell in love with him. And then it just came to the point to where after having our first date, I couldn't imagine my life without him. And how many years ago was that? That's been almost 18 years ago. So oh. yeah, 18 years ago, like we just celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary um, in March. Congratulations. And, um, That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So he became, he just became my, my knight in shining armor. He, he was my mentor. He was my coach, but he became my, my best friend, my spiritual um, confidant, my, um, uh, I mean, my knight in shining armor, I can't even say it any other way. And, you know, in this process, you know, we, we, we build a business together. And so keep in mind, like, I'm still fighting for custody of my three daughters, right? I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm involved in every aspect of their life and every, everything that they do, you know, just like, now keep in mind now, I was, they were in West Texas. I'm now in North Texas. So it's a six hour drive for me to be involved in everything that they do. So I'm burning up the highway yeah. back and forth in the midst of all this. And nobody really knows any of this is going on in my life. Right. And so, um, but you know, here's the thing, uh, the scripture that I stood on was that it was, um, it was Joel too. And it was like that God would restore all the years that the locusts had eaten. And, you know, and there's, 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 I mean, there's, there's a lot, I mean, I could definitely write a book in between of all of this and all the, yes, custody and you should, you absolutely should. In the custody issues of back and forth and everything that he did. Um, and it was, it, you know, really at, at, at the heart of it, what God taught me about the whole process was that how to be a praying mom and, and how to forgive and how to walk in forgiveness completely. Because, you know, whenever, you know, whenever I truly laid everything down and just said, okay, Lord, um, 
if this is the way you want me to be the mom, the mom from the afar, I'm going to be the best mom I can possibly be. And I'm going to be the, you know, but, but what happened was, is that God brought, God like miraculously brought them all home under our roof. Um, it's been the craziest thing that, I mean, like my oldest daughter, she just got married in June. She lived with, she, I mean, so all the years that she was gone, they've all been under the roof that many years plus. Okay. So all right. every, you know, in other words, yeah. like, because it she balanced out. It, yeah. it, it balanced out. I mean, you know, she, I, I love that quote that the, the universe has a perfect accounting system. And truly, you know, it, it does there, there is, everyone kind of gets theirs in the end. Yeah. And, and, and so it's, I mean, it's really been beautiful. It's not how, it's not, it's, it's not how you think your life is going to be, but God's That's just true. been so, so redeeming of all of that time and the relationship that I have with my daughters now. Mm -hmm. is, is incredible. It's unbelievable. Good. Um, I'm one of three. I'm one of three girls. I get it. The bond between the the girls and the mom and all of that is really spectacular. It, it it really is. And um and so I'm so I'm so I mean, so I think that for me that ultimately taught me how to really be a praying mom and really um to really use my time wisely whenever you know the times that we had and really to so into them mm -hmm. and into their lives to be the women that they are and to pray because they, they don't have the scar tissue. Yeah. But, the, but, the, but I always prayed like that, that God would, that the truth would be revealed. Mm -hmm. you know? And now, you know, I mean, he's been exposed their father. I mean, they know who he is and yeah. I didn't have to do anything. They figured it out. Yeah. They figured it out and it, I didn't have to come for me. They figured it out on their own and that's good enough for me. Yep. And, um, but you know, so, so, which that's the list who we are now, like this whole process and in this whole journey, like, you know, having business and doing business and really, this is where I really developed a heart for women and especially, you know, single moms and moms that were entrepreneurs and having an understanding that, you know, you don't always know what's happening behind closed doors. You don't know what's happening in people's lives. And so you've got to let them be who they're going to be. And, and always in the back of your mind, realizing that there may be struggles that you're not aware of, Yeah, you know, and, and, and especially for entrepreneurs, you know, it's like, because we're so self-driven, you know, sometimes we put expectations on people that we want it more for them than they want it for themselves. Like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing this? What, you know what I mean? That kind of, do you know what I mean? That kind of mentality, because we see potential in people yes. that they don't always see in themselves. Right. Oh. And, and so through this process, I learned how to create working environments, especially for women that allow them the freedom and flexibility to, to, to have an incubator kind of process to create community, create a, a way that they can grow up in their time frame. Okay, a way so talk more about that and how, how are you doing that now for, for women? Talk, talk well, about the things that you've been recently putting into, into play. Well, um, because my husband and I, we, 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 we work with primary, with entrepreneurs, especially network marketers, but we have what we call the Thompson rule, which is an 80, 15 and five concept, meaning that 80% of your business or your network will be the person that want to make an extra 500 to a thousand dollars a month. Right. That's how I started, right? The $800 a month person. Mm -hmm. And so 80% of your business, so you have to create that kind of community that allows for them to believe in themselves first, because most women come into businesses and like you and I, they don't necessarily believe in themselves. They, they've, you know, they've been beat up a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, with their environment. Environment is always stronger than will, right? And, and so I, whenever seeing this, I mean, working with entrepreneurs and working in the network marketing space and knowing that three out of four in our space are women, I'm, I, I wanted to create this, this community and, and, and how it started was I shared my story and going back to my story about how my first baby was stillborn. And it was the 25th year anniversary of my first baby being stillborn. And I posted this on Facebook. I shared my story. I was very raw, very authentic. 
And what happened is my Facebook page blew up. And what was really eye-opening was the fact that it was women that were that I had gone to church with, that I'd done business with, that I'd known for years. And they were like, me too, that happened to me as well. Yeah. And I thought, how sad is that, that we, we have these relationships, but we really don't know each other. We really don't know the journey. We really don't know the story. We really don't know what made them who they are and the pain and the tears on the pillow at night yeah. that created this beautiful human with all these gifts and talents. And we don't know that because we're so superficial in our social media relationship building, right? And I thought, uh, what if we could create a community that allowed for women to share their story and to share their journey and that they could light a path for, for the other woman walking behind her going, oh my gosh, me too. I understand that. Like that, that, that's me too. And she saw that she come out on the other side, bigger and better and stronger. And now she gives hope to that other woman that's just now embarking upon, you know, going through the tunnel and going through the pit. Yeah. You know, from the pit okay. to the palace concept. There you go. Yeah, I like that. And 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 so and that's what I've done. So it 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 actually, you know, it started, it was going to be kind of a, a spiritual thing. And I I it was gonna be, I I was going to name it, um, uh, it was gonna be fit for war, which was an acronym that was found in truth for women authentically real. And then, but then I was like, okay, but a lot, it, it was like, okay, it was like, I've just felt like I just said, you need to cast a bigger net. And, and so that's where the she network came into play. And, and she is an acronym stands for sharing her excellence network. Because exactly. the idea behind it is that every woman has a gift. Every woman has a talent. Every woman has an excellence inside of her waiting to come out. Mm -hmm. And there she knows that, her, that needs to hear her story, that needs to hear yeah. that she was meant to share, right? Yeah. And, and because your, your mess is someone else's message. Your oh, test is, is a testimony for someone else. Right back and, and, and so that is, so that's why I wanted to start this because I have so many amazing women in my life and they're so genius at what they do. And I'm so blessed to be able to call them my friend. But what happens is because they're only in their particular lane of business that those women that are in their lane get to see them. But what I've done is open it up for F, so all these women from all these different platforms to be able to come in under this umbrella, share their excellence, and to be a light for somebody else even outside of their lane, outside of their lane of business, right? And it's been such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful, like to see, you know, how all this is unfolding. It's, it's pretty amazing. It is amazing. Sorry. My daughter just walked in. She cooked. Oh, okay. How old is she? Come here. Come say hi. Hi. She's nine. Aw. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. What did you cook? What did you make? I can't see it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Bacon and potatoes and, and toast. toast and chocolate and chocolate. Well, hey, you're it's after perfect. my heart right there. <laughs> you can't have a meal without chocolate. I know. I even got chocolate milk. Oh, very nice. Oh, very good. All right, go go have your snack. <laughs> See you in a minute. What a fun age. Oh yeah, and then my son is seven, so he's getting to binge on Fortnite video games right now. There you go. Yeah. Thank goodness, right? Thank, thank goodness for technology. Yeah, the babysitter. Um, but okay, so I, lo I, love, I love where you were going and I'm taking notes as you were talking about sharing the excellence and you know, I love that like your mess is somebody else's message. So, okay. The wow. last, like, or, like this year alone, I know has been huge for you guys. I mean, you are making great strides with all of this. I want yeah. people to know where, how they can get involved and what they can do to participate and be part of this. 
So, so we have a we have an online community that for for networkers that we that my husband and I work together. So we have a wealth building academy. It's wealthbuilding.pro, where we work together. Where we you know help networkers. So it doesn't matter whatever your company is, product, service, whatever. We teach basic business building fundamentals. You know because so whatever. Um, and, and really that's a lost art that's not really being taught and that's a whole nother whole nother conversation but whenever you um, but you so as a, as a in, in that community you can be a part of the she network but the she network is is a standalone community um, and it's for women and women entrepreneurs so you don't have To be, you don't even have to be a community for women to empower, to edify, to encourage. Um, we celebrate them, the wins, because, and as you know, Rebecca, like here, you know this, you know, that women can sometimes be mean. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and I've seen it a lot in my space, and I don't know about your space, but um, sometimes women can live up to the stereotypical mean girl mm -hmm. and and so i really want to dispel that myth and what i mean by that is is that you know it's like um you know in any business probably and i see it a lot in in the network marketing space is that you know it's like high school right you can have the great high school football hero and he's the hero everybody legend everybody loves him you can have the beautiful cheerleader you know and all the guys like her but yet she is a total bitch she's a bitch right <laughs> nobody likes her it's the same in network marketing like it's like men can come in and blow up the marketing plan and they're a legend right mm -hmm. a woman can come in and they're like oh my god who does she think she is right we get yeah. that kind of mentality. And so I want to dispel that because I want to celebrate women that there's enough room at the top. There's enough oxygen for all of us. And, and, and whenever we celebrate each other, right, it only magnifies the power that we bring to the table because, you know, whenever a woman is celebrate, whenever you celebrate another woman, you know, it's like, You've got one finger pointing out celebrating her, but you got three coming back. It's a boomerang. It's yeah. a boomerang. It's a, it, it, and, and, and we have to take realization of that. That whenever you pave the path and you celebrate somebody else for her genius, the celebration about what for you is right behind it. And we lose, we lose sight of that. We, lo we lose sight of that. And, and because, you know, I want, I mean, and you've seen this before, like how many times like you see women are like, oh my gosh, I, I love your dress or I love your eyes or I love your, you know, so many women are, are intimidated about complimenting another woman. Why? I find that, I find that insecure women are the meanest women, honestly. And the confident ones who are, know who they are, you know, are, are easy to, to give compliments and to receive compliments. It's normally the nasty ones are hiding something or ashamed of something, or they're not sure of themselves and they don't know how to celebrate other women. And if you bring them along or find a way to get through to them, then all of a sudden they're in the club and they're like, okay, like this is a safe place, but something happened to them along the way or they're right. not ready for the message or something. Um, but um, I've seen it maybe because I've got sisters or maybe because um, being a soccer player and, you know, being a teammate with women, but that's always been the culture that I've built with my staff. And now with my whole company, it's that sort of mentality. This week, um, a woman who works for me posted something on our Instagram. I had no idea that she was getting ready to post this, but it was like these pictures of us and this like amazing, like message of affirmation and gratitude. And I was like, Oh, I think that yeah. was just so loving and giving. And you just, those cultures have to be nurtured. They don't just happen overnight like that. Right. And, that and, and that's precisely the way, like, for instance, whenever you come into the group, whenever you come into the group, are you invited in? So let's just say, like, I invite you in and I'm like, okay, meet my friend, Rebecca. Like, I love her. She's Except so for it's Rachel, but that's okay. I <laughs> you know oh my that God, I'm so 
That's okay. Do you know that Rebecca is like my favorite name though? Like I almost named my daughter that. So I, I was just going with it, but I felt like eventually I had to tell you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I apologize. I can't. It's okay. I, oh no, we're good. We're good. Okay. I, I think it'll be my alter ego now. We'll just go with that. <laughs> so whenever you come in, Rachel, um, whenever you come in, um, like, I'm like, meet my friend, Rachel. She's so amazing. And, and tell why you're so amazing. Like whenever I met Rachel at a time, whenever she, you know, she said this one thing to me and it's my deepest, darkest hour and changed the trajectory of my life. Anything's and, possible. And, 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 and so, and what happens is, is that you're like, Rachel's like, oh my God, it takes. I had no idea she felt that way, right? Yeah. And so it becomes this edifying situation where you empower women and you like make them feel good about, you know, the the, the relationship and, and the journey and and sowing seeds of of encouragement. And and so then you come in and you share your story and like I'm so happy to be here, so happy to be in this group, right? This is this is a little bit about me, and then the women love on you. And then yeah. what happens is is that you know weekly what I do is I do interviews with with different powerhouse women, and and um. And are you sure. are you good? I mean, I, I've seen your Facebook and your Instagram, and now I know your website is still being developed, right? Yeah, that should be. I'm. I'm the plan is to launch by the first week in May. With okay. The, all right. Yeah, with the membership site. But we have the Facebook group that's like an open house, um, okay. which will be a part of the membership. But it's open right now, so you can come in, take a look around, you know, meet all the ladies, kind of deal. And um, and so whenever the membership launches, we actually so there's going to be training uh, that all of these ladies that they're, they're going to be doing like they train in their excellence. So in other words, you hear their story, their interview. And then they come in and they do like a training, like something that they think every woman should know, or that was the pivotal point for them that changed the directory of their business, or whether that's in social media or whatever that is. Um, and it could be even because ultimately this is going to be about lanes of even parenting and fitness and um, whatever, because we wear so many different hats and we need so many different things at various aspects of our life. You know, I want this to be a really holistic kind of community that we can pour excellence. I mean, I just think about this. Um, think about what if your what if your genius, your excellence, was how to potty train a two year old in two weeks, right? Yeah, that would be all. That would be everyone needs that at some point. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, if you're a mom, everybody would be like, okay, I'm, I need that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I want it to be whatever that is that okay. you can gift to another woman now are you how are you going to be finding out everyone's things are you are you doing a podcast and like each person gets their own podcast interview so with that, you or that's or do you fill out a form or how does that work so that's going to be where it eventually goes okay. you know right now the platform is it i mean because obviously i'm in network marketing so i'm attracting all the networkers you yeah. know Right. So it, I mean, it will, it will evolve, it will evolve to that. I, I would, I'm, I would, I'm looking for like writers, bloggers, because I, um, any writers or bloggers that would like to make, uh, contribute contributions okay. into any area of life that would pertain to women. That you know, I have a couple, I have a couple people that I should have submit articles to you who are clients, writers, authors that I have women that I've worked with. Um, I'll show you this. I'm going to, I'm going to send, I'm going to send her your way. This is one of my clients and friends. She wrote this book. You can have your all. She says that it's not about having it all. It's about having your all. Love so it. This just came out on Amazon, um, a couple months ago. So um, I'll send her your way for some yeah. blog writing. Yeah, because I mean, so there's, so there's all, there's excellence of women that have writing. I want to be able to showcase I want to be able to showcase women and whatever their gifting and their talents are okay. because I want them to, and you, because we all have, we all have our part. We all have our role. We all have, you know, uh, one of our pieces to fits together our, in somebody's puzzle. Yeah. Our superpowers. Yeah. 
And so I, I want to edify that piece because the thing about it is, is that most of the time we get lost in comparison. We think, okay, well, I'm not as good as she is. Well, you don't have to be. You're good at what you do. You yeah. have, you have a gift that, and your DNA is like no other. And, and you've got to, you've got to edify that. You've got to showcase that. You've got to put it out there. And, and that's, that's the, that's the journey. That's the experience. That's the thing that, and what happens is whenever they tell their story, because so many people hide behind that. I mean, you probably experienced this too, Rachel, like, you know, the, the shame, you know, the, I mean, I know for me, like going, I mean, it was, it was hard. Like, it's hard to tell that part of your story because of all, I mean, there was so much judgment that was placed on me, so much judgment, you know, and, but I had, had to figure I had sort of a different experience with it. Um, and we can dive in, into that at probably another, another time. But for me, it was like, that was the catalyst that helped me figure out the fact that I actually had my own strength at all. It was like, before that, I was always like, focused on the things that I failed at. And once I got through that. I was like, if I can make it through this, I all of a sudden am like fearless when it comes to like business opportunities. And when it comes to trying new things, all of a sudden I'm like, I can do it. I can do everything. I can do anything. I, I, got, I got this. I am not scared. It was yeah. so weird. It was like, and I didn't care what anyone thought anymore. I was like, I have learned to live with a certain amount of disapproval from people. And before I was always seeking approval yeah. Um, and acknowledgement and like, oh, are they going to like me? Are they going to like me? Now I'm like, okay, not everyone's going to like me and that's okay. And I don't need to be mean about it. It's just, I needed that kick in the pants. <laughs> but it was probably, it's like, but, but what you experience is that albatross that had been hanging around your neck was yeah. gone, was yeah. gone. And, and sometimes women don't necessarily lose that until they tell that until they tell the story and then whenever they then whenever another woman goes oh my gosh thank you for telling me your story that you yeah. your story changed my life and then they're like oh my gosh really me my story and then then they're like now they want to tell it more now they're totally free <laughs> you know they don't have to hide anymore it's so it's so crazy how it works yeah it's crazy really. it's so empowering at the same time so how can women join this community? How can they get involved? Um, and I know that they'll get an opportunity to tell their story, obviously, when they get involved, but yes. are you taking other types of businesses? Like, um, I don't know, like I have a client friend who makes these amazing custom jewelry pieces. Like, should she get involved? Like who, who should get involved? I, I want, so here's the thing for me, if they're a woman. Okay, they're in. Come on, come on over. Okay. Like, Come on over because you know here's what i know like here's ultimately again if because usually i mean uh, uh, attracting entrepreneurs in the mindset around that you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of value right because we teach i you know i talk about business i talk about uh business training and stuff like that that you're gonna get that kind of stuff outside of the stories and the value that you'll get as far as being a member uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you'll definitely get value. Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, if they're entrepreneurs and they're, they're selling stuff or they're marketing stuff, you know, it, it exposes them to other women that they can leverage that and they can, you know, expose themselves and they can expose what they do because we only know what we know, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are sharing your story and this is, this is why I become an entrepreneur and this is, I would love to have those women over there because they bring value and they have value and you just never know. You just never know what story is going to connect and what women's going to connect because ultimately, um, because in the, in this membership, we also, uh, 10% of the proceeds are going to, we have a, a philanthropy piece okay. that is going to a women empowerment movement. I just got back from Africa in, um, January and I wanted something that I could partner with that really would have major impact. And, and what it is, it's called PCI Global, which is a women empowerment and, a, and one of the arms that they do, it's been around for 30 plus years, um, that 89 cents of every dollar goes to the women 
we went to, uh, they support women in third world countries and help them with build micro businesses. And what we were able to do was go and see these women in these villages and how they've implemented this training and started businesses in their villages to make a difference in their community. And we're already starting to see the ripple effect. So $50 can educate a woman for, that takes them through an 18 month process of educating her on how to have her own business. It's so, it was so impactful, um, so impactful. And so um, I'm partnering with this because it's not just a charity, it's a movement. Because it's the idea of, you can, you can give a man a fish and he'll eat, yeah. but you teach a man a fish, he'll eat for life. Yeah. And so one of the things that was really important to me that I saw in this is that these women were teaching their children how to do their business. Out, so they're going to be doing the business with their children and it's going to the ripple effect that takes place. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, so, so membership and is this all going to be remote or there, is there any in-person that comes with this or has that planning? Uh, ultimately, I mean, I'm going to take the, the membership and well, obviously can't do it now with social distancing, but the idea would be able to go into where the, where the memberships are the, where the heaviest pooled and start having and have live meetings and do live meetings. And then uh, the idea, so let's just say you're in Orange County and you're going to host a meeting for the She Network. And so we have the women and they come and they have to event. And so we're, we're teaching them, giving them tools that they need to help them with their business, parenting, whatever, whatever those things are, primarily business. And then the next day I want to do, we're going to have like a boots on the ground. Like in other words, um, like our own field trip of serving women locally in your community that make a difference for women. And we're going to go and pour into women in your local community. And that's what I see. I see like as, as those pockets of things start to take place of how they can have impact for women in their communities. That's awesome. Okay. Love it. Okay. Right. So I'm super excited about that. I love it. Fantastic. Okay. So, so getting involved right now, they can go to, I mean, they can go jump into the Facebook group that we have and it's my she network. Okay. Um, so it's groups, you know, it's like facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash my she network. Um, and, and then, uh, when it, and all of, all of the launch, everything will be in, in the launch, um, which is probably where I'm shooting for the first week in May, the website and the membership site will go hand in hand with that. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to be offering doing like, um, within the membership, they'll get like personal coaching from me. Um, we'll be doing masterminds inside the group. Um, I mean, the idea idea is ultimately Rachel is I just wanted to create a community for women to empower each other mm -hmm. and to really encourage each other because a lots of times again they're just not getting it from their yeah. own environment yeah well and now now is the time I mean women yeah. business owners are on the rise everywhere everywhere yes is. so yes that's really exciting. Good. All right. Well, I'm going to be sending some people your way. Um, we will be posting this all across social media, um, websites, YouTube, um, email blasts, and we'll, we'll share it with everybody and, um, you know, start building up this, this community of, of chapters of women all over who want to support each other. I love it. Thank you. I'm excited about it. I'm really excited. About and thank it. you for telling me, I mean, like all of the stuff about your story and being so open and sharing and just being, you know, honest with everybody about it. That is really powerful. Thank you. I, um, again, my message may be somebody else's message, right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> what was I wrote down? Yeah. My, Oh, your mess is someone else's message. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. For, we did like a double episode today. So that was awesome. And uh, I'll, uh, 
I'll make sure to share it and tag you and everything. So you guys follow everybody at My Sheen Network and the big launch is coming up in May. So more yes. to come. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for stopping by the Brunch Club. It's been our pleasure to share this time with you. We look forward to bringing you more sparkling inspiration next weekend. If you have feedback, topics, or want to nominate someone to be a guest on the show, please reach out to us at rachel at sundaybrunchagency.com. Cheers. Welcome to Sunday Brunch. We're a boutique advertising agency located here in Orange County, California. At Sunday Brunch, we custom build teams for all of our clients. Each team member's both personal passions and professional excellence is matched up to meet the needs of your business. Capabilities range from brand building, design, public relations, social media, websites, media planning, buying, working with influencers, events, and even more. Want to contact us? We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Instagram or online at sundaybrunchagency.com.